I've been the press of Atlantic City sports editor for 10 years, and I can't think of a local high school pitching prospect as hyped as Jason Groom. Mike, what makes this kid so special? Jason Groom looks like a major league prospect is supposed to look. He's six feet five. He's left-handed. He throws his fastball 96 miles per hour. His curveball breaks so sharply over the plate it makes fans gasp. We went up to Barnegat along with about 100 major league scouts to watch Jason pitch his season opener. Of the 500,000 high school baseball players in America, only a handful have the opportunity that Jason Groom does. The six foot five pitcher from Barnegat is projected to be one of the top 10 picks and maybe even the number one selection in June's Major League Draft. All right, good, good, all right. Where is he, right over there? I know I'm very fortunate to be in, my, in this position, but I mean, I'm just taking it all in. I mean, I love playing baseball and I just, it doesn't really get to my head because I know like, I just want to be able to wake up and do what I love to do every single day. And it's just, I know I have a chance to do that by just playing baseball. And I mean, I love that. I mean, teachers always used to tell me when I, when we always used to say, what do you want to be when I grow up? And I always used to tell a major league baseball player and they would never believe me. So I would always have to change it to a cop. It's cool to have a kid like this at our school. So uh, have all these people come out here and watch. It's exciting to be here. He's a, he's a nice guy. He hangs out with all the kids. They all hang out after baseball and on the weekends. And they're just all good friends. Wishing each other luck and what comes next. He's going to the major league. He's pitching here. Showtime, right? Let's roll. Here we go. Come hey. On. Hey, boys. Barney on three. One, two, three. Let's go. It's mainly just my mindset. I mean, I know they come here for one thing, and that's to watch me pitch, but I try not to let it get to my head because I know they're out there just critiquing my every move, and I know if I try and light up the radar guns, I'll overthrow a little bit, but when I just relax and pitch and just throw strikes, I mean, it it, gets, it speaks for itself. Pretty fluid with his delivery and, uh, you know, good size, durability, and he's only 17, so he's going to get big and strong, you know. Pretty rare. Yeah, I'd say, you know, it's nice to have him once in a lifetime. Did you have any idea growing up that he would be this talented or, you know, did he come out of the crib throwing the ball or what was it like? He started throwing young. Uh, four to five, he couldn't get a ball out of his hand. And then once about he hit six years old, we focused on mechanics, you know, and he just, he took a liking to it and he, he was just so coachable, yeah. you know, he listened to everything I said and I wasn't one of them people that tried to like not do, you know, when I was younger and try and live through him, right. he just, he took a liking to it and yeah. he just, he did everything I said and he just, it got, you know, progressively better. So Mike, where did this kid come from? Well, he grew up in Barnegat and he pitched at Barnegat his sophomore season and that's where he first gained notice around the state. Pitched Barnegat to the South Jersey Group 2 final where they lost to Buna 1-0. His junior year, he went down to IMG Academy in Florida. He came back to Barnegat for his senior year, said he wanted to play with his friends, guys he grew up with, and try to win a state championship. All right, so, you know, we talk about how much hype this kid is. Who does he compare to maybe now in, in the majors to give some perspective to, to people who don't really know him? Well, you hear a lot of pitchers uh, mentioned, but the number one pitcher you hear mentioned is Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers, who is, of course, an all-star pitcher and one of the best in the game. So that's a guy you hear about. Ironically, uh, Jason's favorite player is a second baseman for the Boston Red Sox, Dustin Pedroia. But a guy he's compared to is Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers. That's impressive. Uh, top pick in my fantasy draft. There recently. you go. So, um, all right, so what's the process now for Jason next? Um, obviously, the draft is coming up, and he's got his baseball season. 
What what are the next steps going to happen here? Well, he's going to pitch, uh, you know, every fifth or sixth day for Barnegat, and there's going to be hundreds of scouts, probably high-level major league personnel at each one of his outings, and you know, probably the hype will get bigger as the season progresses. As he said the other day, uh, it's only going to get worse; it's not going to get better. The first year major league pro player draft is June 9th. Uh, he has a chance to be the top pick in that draft. The signing bonus for the number one pick last year was $6.5 million. So wow. he's looking at, you know, uh, potentially uh, changing his life and getting the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, instant millionaire kind of thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean, the question most Phillies fans want to know, the Phillies have the number one pick. What do you think? Is he going to be in Philadelphia maybe? Well, there's a chance. You know, the uh, Phillies came through a season opener. Uh, the general manager, Matt Klintek, was there. Several other uh, front office personnel was there. Like you said, the Phillies have that number one pick. High school pitchers uh, are sometimes a dicey proposition to get picked, but if the Phillies take him, I'm sure there's a lot of Phillies fans down here that would like to follow Jason's career as it progresses to Philadelphia. And, of course, we'll be following that journey all through the spring high school season. Make sure to check that out at pressofac.com. I mean, I know it's only going to get worse, but I mean, I'm